guys in this video we're going to talk about stratified sampling in fact I'm gonna to have to split this up into a series of at least two videos because not only do I want to present to you the definitions and the ideas and the concepts but I want to actually quickly get into an applied scenario where we're gonna actually take a stratified sample and do some analysis on it and see whether some of the uh, improvements that are promised are actually visible okay so let me very quickly go through this uh, high-level discussion of what stratified sampling is and then let's get our hands dirty so stratified sampling is an alternative to simple random sampling that's what SRS stands for if you've taken any basic statistics course you know what this is SRS is basically the premise for all the data that you used in your intro stats course okay typically professors won't get too far into other sampling techniques uh, aside from mentioning them okay so what is stratified sampling well stratified sampling divides the population up into k non-overlapping distinct subpopulations called strata Okay, so why go through this process? Why stratify? Okay, well, one, you might be interested in learning about the subpopulations, perhaps to compare them later, and that's something you can't do if you didn't originally divide up your population. Okay, so they ha there is that benefit. Two, it's convenient for organizing data collection and most large studies have a major problem collecting data so they end up having to stratify their population into subpopulations and then take simple random samples from within each of the strata okay that's one uh, implementation of stratified sampling and three and possibly the most important is the improvement in precision of your estimate so you're going to get a smaller error of estimation especially when the strata are homogeneous okay sometimes in stats we call that an efficiency gain okay so we're going to actually be able to see all these in effect in an example in R so I want to very quickly get to that we can obviously spend much more time talking about this topic conceptually it's very interesting but uh, we're going to get into the uh, application quickly okay let me mention that the example that we're doing I'm going to be using something called specifically proportionate stratified sampling and what this means is that from each of the strata each of the subpopulations in my population I'm going to take a sample with a sample size that's proportionate to the population subpopulation size okay you'll see that in practice again and more specifically I'm gonna be taking simp I'm gonna be taking random samples from within each of my strata alright there are all kinds of ways to mix up different sampling techniques and combine them so specifically what I'm doing in this example is going to be proportionate stratified sampling where I use random sampling within each strata okay okay let's get started with our simulation so first thing we need to do is create a data set so let's do that so I have my code prepared in fact let me give you a glimpse of what the code is for this tutorial series so you see this is not something I'd necessarily want to do on the fly uh, while in a live recording so let's just start step by step at the top so I'm gonna set my seed at a certain value so I can repeat my results so that's all that is okay so obviously looking at this code and 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 the topic that we're talking about you have to have some uh, background in statistics and understand at least understand random sampling simple random sampling and as far as coding and R you have to be quite comfortable with basic functionality in R 
I'm going to be using a couple for loops, um, some random number generation, and then basic functions in R. So if you've got that level of understanding, you should be able to follow along, but you can always pause, rewind, and work through. Okay, there's no, no crazy uh, programming going on here. Okay, so first group of commands here are going to generate our data set. So let's see what this data set is creating. This is important because this is going to be our population. So we're making a population, a simulated population, that then we're going to start taking samples from. So let's learn about the population. I'm calling it df. It's a data frame and I have just two variables. So I'm trying to be as simple as we can possibly be for this um, demonstration. So I have one variable which is gender and it's got two levels female and male okay I'm being I'm simplifying things I know okay there's gonna be 6,000 females let me use this 6,000 females and 4,000 males that's important to keep in mind because that's gonna be our stratifying variable okay we're gonna stratify this population of as you can see 10,000 people into two groups so for us K is two, we have two strata, and one is gonna be of size 6,000, one is gonna be of size 4,000. Okay, and the distinguishing quality is the gender. Okay, but that's not the variable I wanna analyze. The actual variable I wanna study and learn about is HT, which is height. Okay, my abbreviation for height. And how did I generate height? Well, this is what I did. I wanted to create uh, random heights for the females and the males but I wanted it kind of it's I think it's a it's a valid assumption that on average females are shorter than males so I wanted that to be reflected okay so let's see how I did that so since there's 6,000 females I'm gonna generate 6,000 normally distributed random numbers that have an average of 60 with a standard deviation of 5. So I'm obviously height here is inches. So 60 inches, right? It's about 5 feet. So I'm saying that the average female here in this data set is 5 feet tall with a standard deviation of 5 inches. Okay? And then for the males as a group, I generate 4000 heights for them their average height is 90 inches. I know that is ridiculous, but I think my idea behind this was to make it much taller or much different than the females. So I didn't want to make the females sh a lot shorter than that. Uh, so I had to make this a lot bigger. That's not realistic, I know, but this is the beauty of uh, simulating your own data. You can do the opposite for yourself if you like. Okay, so the average male in our data set will be 90 inches tall and with a standard deviation of 5. So it's going to be a, a decent amount of variability in these data sets, uh, in, in, the, in the height data, rather. Okay, and as we can see, one of the benefits, let's go back, of number, th number three, uh, one of the benefits of stratified sampling over simple random sampling is that improvement in precision, especially when the strata are homogeneous. Oops. Okay. And what does that mean? That means, well, with respect to the variable that we're studying, which in this case is height, males are on average a lot taller. You could see because we're creating the population. So it's kind of like we know already what the uh, population looks like. And then we're going to take samples from it. So this is kind of, this wouldn't be a realistic way to do a study, but this would be a great way to learn about uh, a concept. Okay. Uh, so males are on average a lot taller than females. So this is that case where we have very homogeneous uh, strata. In this case, two. Okay, we have the female strata and the male strata. Okay? Okay, so let's generate that data. Okay, so we're going to end up, if, if you're following me, we're going to end up with a data set that is, that has a size of uh, uh, 10,000 
uh, rows. Um, actually, we should say it this way. We're going to have a population of size 10,000, right? 6,000 are going to be female, 4,000 male. So let's copy and paste that into R. Of course, on your end, if you're following along and actually you want to repeat these uh, results, you uh, can pause and, and um, uh, be able to uh, catch up and, and keep pace with me. So we very quickly generated this data set. And the last thing I want to do in this part one of stratified sampling is just dissect this guy a little before we start taking any samples. So in part two, what I'm going to do is uh, take, start taking samples from this population that we just created. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, but but let's hold that off till part two. Let's learn about uh, this data frame we just created, which is for us uh, complete population uh, date uh, information. So we so we have a population we wanted to study, and we know every single uh, in, uh, value of interest in that population. Obviously, that's rarely uh, or never the case. Um, but this is again a way of learning. So I just looked at the head of the data frame so you get to see uh, the first six observations and roughly what the data set looks like. You see that the first six observations are all female. I put them first and these are their heights. So you see their heights here. Okay. And if I look at the tail very quickly you see the last ten, <clears throat> the last six rather. And they're all female, uh, male because I put the male second. And these are their heights. Okay, so you see there's variability, and you see already just from this little snippet that the female group is quite different than the male group with respect to what we're measuring and what we're going to study. Okay, um, so these this is a perfect scenario to apply a stratified sampling scheme. Okay, uh, I want to learn a little more before I move on. So let's actually just study the, the, the population. So let's look at, for example, let's see what I have here. I want to learn about the mean of the population, the variance of the population, and then the mean and the variance of the subpopulation. So let's do that. So in order to do that, I'm just going to use the mean variance functions and then for the subpopulations I'm going to use aggregate so let's do this first <clears throat> okay and let me just pull this down a bit so we see that so these are population parameters right so we know what mu is we know what sigma is and then we're going to know mu and sigma for the individual uh, strata as well in a second but so this is mu right this right here, 72.07222, is the average height of the population. Okay, You very rarely know that, but here we do. We get to peek behind the scenes. Uh, and then I saw that there is about a 60, 40, exactly a 60-40 split as far as the number of observations. Okay, That's important for me to know later on especially and then we see that the variance of height for the population is 242.5161 okay so that is the population variance right sigma square okay and now let's look at the subpopulations and to do that you can use t apply i chose to use aggregate so let's see what what this gives us okay So we see first that the mean of females is almost exactly what we requested of 60 and the males 90. That's nice to see. So these are the mu, you can, as far as symbols, if you're following along, this is useful. Mu sub f and mu sub m. Okay, these are the po these are the subpopulation parameters, if you will. Okay, and the variance of the genders, females and males are about. I set it up so they have the same about the same variability. So these this would be sigma squared for the females and sigma squared for the males. Okay, 
All right, that's great. That's great to know, especially kind of before we jump into the random sampling process. We kind of already know what the true values of our population parameters are, and so uh, we can compare our results from sampling uh, to the true results that we saw um, here and, and above with the, the mean and the variance of the overall population. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. I hope this is interesting. Please continue to watch part two because part two is when we're actually now we're going to start taking samples from this population. Okay, so uh, make sure to subscribe, follow, share, and have a great day.